Dear friends, comrades, like uh, Sandy likes to, to call me once in a while, comrade, comrade. My name is Eric Agnero. I'm originally from uh, Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. We supply 40% of the cacao in the world, yet kids are now facing I mean, uh, troubles like when you use Roundups. Roundup is now ditched over there because here our regulations don't want them anymore. But over there it's still flexible. Cote d'Ivoire, cacao. So every time you bite on a chocolate bar, remember those kids. Steve, uh, Tom and I went to uh, Cote d'Ivoire and then we went to a plantation. It was a nice experience to see where your cocoa comes from and how you can affect the people's lives over there. Well, Eric, so now I live in Vermont. I used to be a reporter for VOA when I was government, spying around maybe. I worked also for the private sector, CNN, but uh, since three or four years ago, I found a nice place where I can call home which is Vermont, I decided to come here and I feel all right. And there's a lady who welcomed me here. Oh, uh, she held my hands and then showed me around. Uh, do you know Peter? <laughs> Peter Clavel. Call him sometimes. <laughs> so good big brothers of, of yours. Uh, how about uh, good kind? Huh? Uh, have you talked about this to Tom? She has a, uh, an idea every minute. It's hard to follow, <laughs> Sandy. But it's fun. Fun, because she brings so much to our community. And then Sandy also brought me back to a house which belongs to, to uh, the New Americans, but also beyond the New Americans to all... Uh, people, disenfranchised people around here. I see uh, 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 clients of ours from different walks of life, women that are facing, you know, trouble at home, kids that are, you know, uh, you know getting used to uh, play with a gun, and then boom, a tragedy comes, you know. Peter told me once, Eric, I've seen now, I'm seeing, you know, those kids, those kids, you know, at Battery Park, most of them, you know, in the peripheries of our society. What's wrong? What's wrong? And then Sandy says, it's because we need to empower more the families, the women, that, you know, uh, this is the solution, empowering the women. This year, we couldn't you know, do a big festival with, you know, because it's not only about festival. It's also about Thanksgiving and recognizing those who are doing it in our communities. And ALV, where Sandy brought me back, is doing so much for our community. So much. I see kids who normally would be after school wandering around town, seeing they i think they went skiing with sam so thank you so much for being here now i would like sandy to uh, come and tell us why she wants us this sunday afternoon <laughs> to be here together sandy bell hi and, and thank you all for coming out on a spring day and a sunny spring day, which is, of course, very unusual. Um, many of you know my name is Sandy Baird, and I founded many years ago when my daughter was uh, murdered in a, a situation of domestic violence by her so-called so boyfriend, I guess, um, and that was in 1998. At that time, my family, Grant Critchfield, and our daughter, Rosie, and our grandson, Nathan, formed, although Nathan wasn't born at that time, uh, a fund or a foundation called the Caroline Fund, and that was a fund that was to help women in crisis situations. 
to pay, for instance, an electricity bill. I just got a call today from a woman who had a disconnect notice. As many of you have had, I've had them too, disconnect notices come when you haven't paid your electric bill. And usually it can be for a very small amount. So the Caroline Fund, recognizing that families were often in trouble financially for very small amounts of money, we founded that, and Caroline was often in that kind of a difficulty, we founded the Caroline Fund to help those women in crisis uh, with small amounts of money. Uh, and that was the original purpose, and we did that, and we still do that today. We also, though, try to empower, at this point, projects which, and help those projects develop, which help women in their families. And by that, I mean we don't just help women. We also help men who have the um, grace and the sense to honor their women and to empower and to empower their own families. So we help women and their families, and that, that includes women and their male children and daughters, of course, but also um, their husbands and their partners. And all women have those kind of men in their lives, so we welcome that. Over the years, we then have helped develop projects with, which assist women and their families, and we help other projects who are also in existence to help women and their families. I have been at AALV for a number of years, and I do a lot of legal work here. What I've noticed over the years is the help that this organization of AALV gives to women and their families. We see, and, they, and AALV sees, women from all over the world. I cannot tell you the stories that come through my office. I think Nathan, who's back there and who's a new young lawyer, as I'm, and I'm always calling on him for help. I can't tell you, as, but Nathan can, all the stories of the situation for women throughout the world. These people come to AALV for help, and they come to me for legal help a lot. These are women who live in our community. I cannot even stress how important it is to recognize something that goes on in this community. We have mothers in this community, mothers of large families, and thank heavens, because as we all know, Vermont's on a demographic decline. It's a very aging state. We need children. The women I see have the grace to give us big families. They don't have to, you know, anymore. Women don't have to do that. However, these women that I see are the mothers of large families who will be the future of the state of Vermont. But they have been completely, I think, neglected by our community, by our state, and by our country. These are women I see every day who lack education. Many of them come from even poorer parts of the planet. Many of them come from Africa, Nepal, Burundi, from uh, even the Eastern Bloc of countries, Russia, Vietnam. Those women come here under really dire circumstances. They are often, often the victims of war, which we tend to forget. They are from countries that are, are, are at war. They get out of those countries because they've been in refugee camps, a lot of them, and then they come often married to the uh, United States, uh, kind of assigned here, and they come with husbands, sometimes. And they come with husbands who very often, like American men, unfortunately, they come with men who very quickly, often, too often, abuse them, uh, act violently toward these mothers, they abandon them, they're unable to get real child support because those husbands leave the state or have other families to support. Um, I've, and these women also are largely uneducated. Some of them, most of them do not speak English, and most of them, some of them are illiterate in any language. This is tough. And the only institution, I think, in this town, in this state, who recognize who they are what they are giving to this community and what uh, they are giving to the state of Vermont is this association, 
called the Association of Africans Living in Vermont. They alone seem to get it at what's happening in our community, as these mothers have been totally neglected. Most of the people I see, mothers I see, and fathers, are black and brown people. So if we're going to recognize, truly, if we are going to be a non-racist, non-sexist society, we have to recognize the reality in this community that the black women, brown women, and poor white women have been totally neglected. Totally neglected, without resources, without education, and without skills, because they haven't been taught that many skills. And they are bringing up our future, and it's really tough. It is really a tough job to do that on your own. The organization that recognizes that more than any other that I've seen, really in the United States, and I've seen a lot, is AALV, the Association of Africans Living in Vermont, and their directors, Jacob Bogre back there, and Tato Ratsabin. And I'm giving, <laughs> and for that, we, the Caroline Fund, are giving Tato a, uh, a certificate of service and to honor her work in this uh, community. Jacob Bogre, a man from Burkina Faso. Tato is from Botswana. Um, and the Caroline F Fund is proud to give them these certificates of award of their incredible, I can't even tell you how incredible the work that's done here is. And I'm so privileged and honored to be here with them to, to do in my way to help them, um, help them help the mother. I don't like to say help the mothers of this community. They support them. They understand what's going on. And I can't be happier enough in my old age to be here helping them out in this incredible role. Um, anyway, so that's why we are giving them this award, these awards, and the association, Tato, Jacob, and the uh, AALV. But thank you all for being here, and we're going to have food pretty soon. And by the way, this is Eric Adiero, and I want to tell you, he is also developing the second project the Caroline Fund is devoting itself at this point to two projects that help all people and families. One is to try to make our law firm here more economically viable in the first place, because I've always done legal work, but I don't really charge the same rates as other people. So, however, that's one project. I would like to have an economically viable law firm and also a project, an educational project called Vermont Institute of Civic and Community Involvement, or Vicky, which was the original t name of a very special place for me, which was Burlington College. Anyway, well, those are the two. And Eric is the project director of Vicky in particular. Great. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, I'm uh, very honored to, as uh, uh, part of uh, the Caroline Fund through Vicky, to uh, uh, now give those certificates. But I would like you to, uh, when they come. To the okay, I want to introduce one other person that's become part of this organization. And that is this young man. Will you stand up? Sure. His name is Tim Galloway. And he is a young person. And he, I hope, will be taking over because he's so youthful some of the roles that I've had in this community, some of the roles that we've all acted on. Okay, and the other person that I want to say assisted in this gathering is Robin Lloyd, who is back there, who is, uh, who is the chair, or the, I don't know, what's your role in Wilt? The Women's International League of Peace and Freedom. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Thank you, Sandy. So, uh, I think, Robin will give the title certificate, okay. and then you will give uh, that of Jacob, mm -hmm. and then uh, Peter will give uh, that of ALV, and we like Tato very much, so she will uh, take the one from ALV and say a word. 
Ce que femme veut, Dieu veut. Ok? Yeah, stand okay. here. And then give that to... Uh, Tato. No, no. To Jacob. To Jacob. Okay, Jacob, come. <laughs> and this guy. This guy, you know what people call him in this office? is Papa Jacob. <laughs> he is the quintessential father that we all wish we had. And most of us maybe did or didn't. I'll leave it that way. Okay, but this is Jacob. Papa Jacob. <laughs> Tell me, photo. Uh, voilà. Oh, okay. Okay. Initially, it looked like us. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, would it look like us? I think so. It was good. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you, Sandy. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Robin Lloyd, who's. Uh, from uh, Wilf, a sponsor of this uh, event, but also a very, very good partner of the Caroline Fund. Please uh, uh, welcome Robin Lloyd. I want to say a few words about Robin because I'm so impressed with her. We have many kind of disagreements, as I do with most people in the world, but we always part comrades. Robin's fan, the reason that I think Robin deserve, deserves a special recognition, her family is the Lloyd family who was involved in World War I, correct? And they, see, you can tell your own story, but one of the things that Robin's family has always recognized is the connection between women's struggles in the world and peace. As I understand, she's one of the most anti-war activists that I know of on earth. Her family was involved, I think, in 1913, correct? In having women go to The Hague in Holland with, and met with women from Germany to try to make peace in World War I. They recognized that women have common sense and that war is really not good for the planet under any circumstances. So I've, I've always linked in my mind Robin's struggles for women's rights with all of our struggle to be to bring wars to an end but anyway that's robin so robin would you mind give the award to uh, tato thank you so much <laughs> she said Tato ne parle pas français. Come on, Tato. You have to say a word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please, Tato. Yeah. Please, stay, Tato. We'll ask now Peter Clavel. You know, the first time I, you know, Peter and I met, I was trying to be the mayor of uh, a city that my uncle is like, he doesn't want to let it go. <laughs> so, I told him, why would you want that <laughs> job? <laughs> Especially now, I guess. Peter, oh, c'est avec plaisir que je te demande de remettre à Tato these certificates of recognition for yes. the wonderful job, on wonderful be, work. On behalf of the community, I'd like to thank AALB for all that you have done to make Burlington and the region and the state a welcoming place for those who are escaping poverty, violence, war. And AALB has been such a lifeline to thousands of people. Thank you. And thank you, Jason. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I almost always end up being designated to speak, and I do not like <laughs> public speaking. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, in fact, I feel very honored. Thank you, Sandy, the Kalan Fund Grant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone who's come here to to support this. Um, I look around and I see some of our team. Jacob and I talk a lot about how we would not be able to support 
support the community the way we are able to without the incredible stuff that we have. We all come from walks of, of life. In fact, most of our staff came from refugee camps. Uh, we do this work every day. I listen to families' stories, women's harrowing stories of their experiences of war, children who are getting traumatized and our team getting re-traumatized. We don't have the normal eight or nine to five hour work. We work throughout the day, throughout the night when necessary. Uh, so I uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity to actually uh, recognize our staff who um, work day and night to make sure that there's some stability, uh, that uh, the clients that we serve uh, have an understanding of what the mail that comes through their doors mean. Uh, that when children are struggling, their children are struggling in schools, they're the first people to make a phone call or be present in school to advocate. Uh, mothers who are trying their best to work in this community, as well as continue to be uh, really the backbone of their uh, families. Mothers who are now are starting to tell us more of their stories, stories of joy, stories of getting married while some at a much younger age than the culture that they had, but then being disrupted in the middle of wanting to make livelihoods, going through uh, bushes, uh, being followed by um, you know, uh, people who were trying to come after them or their spouses, mothers who had to carry the babies as they were set in refugee camps, who still made sure that the families ate in the middle of the war. Harrowing stories of mothers who their spouses. Just last week, I have been working with this lady, my colleague and I, for almost six years now, for the first time after six years, first time. Uh, she said to me, do you know that I had six children who were all killed in one day? And when I tried to speak, my husband was killed. And he said, I pretended that I was dead. And she said to me, I wish I was dead. Uh, such stories are painful to hear. But these are the stories that also show the human resiliency. These are the stories that also motivate some of us to come here to want to do this every day. We couldn't do this work uh, really without everybody's support. We couldn't do this work without uh, Sandy's support. Um, Sandy, I, I, I don't know how you do this every day. This woman is here before almost all of us every day. <laughs> and sometimes she will leave very late. Sometimes I'm in court with her. I come back, I'm exhausted. And she goes like, who's coming next? I'm waiting for five other people. <laughs> I'm like, where does she get this energy? <laughs> uh, but it's, it just shows how uh, passionate and the kind of a heart you have for, for, for the community, regardless of color, regardless of you know, sexual orientation, regardless of uh, where people come from. This is what uh, actually motivates us to keep going. We feel very, very fortunate to be able to serve the community. Uh, it's vocation for us. Uh, the community, we wouldn't be who we are really without the community. We are grateful that we, we are in the great state of Vermont. We are grateful that we get to participate and hopefully most people who are citizens will go register to vote because we need everybody to vote. Um, I just have to say that we have a woman mayor in Burlington. I don't know what that means. I try not to <laughs> get in politics. Uh, but you know, these are the changes that we get to be part of and are very grateful to, to be in uh, somewhat a safe uh, space where we can be ourselves, where we can talk about our traumas and talk about solutions in the end. So on behalf of the incredible team at AALV, we are very grateful and thank you so much for recognizing our work. Thank you. Tato Ratsebe. I just
just want to tell you all a story about how uh, Tata works. It was a Friday night, it was about 11 o'clock on one Friday night that she called me because one of our most precious clients was locked up in our police station. This is a rather horrifying tale about our police station too. I hate to, I hate to say it in a way because I support our police chief and in general our police department. It was about though 11 o'clock at night and she called me and she said one of our young women who uh, is having enormous, enormous problems adjusting to the United States. She was a woman from South Sudan, uh, a, a woman who had been more or less brought to the United States by um, an Amer American citizen, also from South Sudan, married, terribly, terribly abused by her husband, abandoned in South Sudan by her husband who took her kids, all her documents, and came back to the United States, leaving her there with some miracle, a miracle. I can't tell you how many miracles this woman, Tato, and Jacob uh, conduct on a regular basis although they're not saints yet, right? Anyway, so um, yet. Uh, so she, this woman, however, had been locked up in the police station. Apparently she had gotten into a fight with a neighbor. An easy enough thing to do, as, as we all know. Americans do it all the time. This woman, however, was locked up in the police station, and it was 11.30. So Tato asked if I could help, and so I called the police station, something that was normal five, ten years ago, you could always call the police station and get an answer, couldn't you? Couldn't you? You can't anymore, by the way. You can't anymore. But anyway, so I didn't get an answer. Um, and I was really worried. And so I went down to the police station to see if I could at least tell this poor woman that she doesn't have to talk to the police. She has a constitutional right to remain silent. I didn't know what they were going to do. I was told by Tato that they were going to interrogate the woman. So I went down and met her. This is 11 o'clock on a Friday night when a woman like her should be out on a date, right, and having a good time. Anyway, so I went to the police station, and you could not get into the police station. None of the doors were open, no dispatcher, nobody would answer the phone. I wandered around in Battery Park, kind of scared as a matter of fact. And finally, I sat in my car, Tata was there, and a police op a, a cop finally came out of the police station, and I said, look at my client's in there. I need to go talk to that woman. Do you know what he said? Lawyers are not allowed. Can you imagine this? Anyway, but Tata was right there with me, and she persisted. We went into the police station, still couldn't talk to anybody. Right? And we finally had to leave. We never did get in contact with that woman that night. Um, anyway, so that, but that's the story of how she works. Every weekend, this is what this woman does, and Jacob. And as far as I can tell, every night, every Saturday, and every Sunday. It is an amazing role that they are playing in this community. I can't tell you how honored I am to be working with them especially because I'm rather elderly, and so I feel enormously pri privileged to be here, hey, doing, uh, helping to do the work of this association. Last, I want to say, happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh. Happy St. Patrick's, and good for the Irish. They are the most rebellious people, except, oh, yeah, 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 except for the Scots, of all the people oh, yeah, yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Merci, merci. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Yes, now, uh, Sandy, you know, uh, in French we say, na, a mis les petits plats dans les grands. There's good food, very, very good food. To socialize, to network, and then to say again, thank you to Tato, thank you to, Jose, uh, to uh, Jacob, thank you to ALV for the wonderful job, the wonderful work they're doing. Merci beaucoup. Oh, 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 oh. Sandy, Sandy, yeah. come on. Tu n'as pas, pas fait des choses simples. Tato, who keeps it? Jeff. 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 Jeff.
Jacob. Papa Jacob. And this is Le Daddy. This, this is Nathan, our new lawyer that I'm trying to control. Thank you so much for exactly. Jacob and I just tell them what to do. <laughs> or sometimes they tell us what to do. Thank you so much for coming and uh, supporting ALB work. I think uh, we would not be able to do what we are doing without uh, this community support. You know, every day we come in thinking that we will be quitting the next day, but at the end of the day, you leave knowing that you've learned something. Because when people come and share their story, you see how resilient they are. When a mother who has been resettled here for more than 10 years is able to bring his two kids who were lost in war in Ethiopia and bringing them to LB and say, this is my family, this is where you should come if I die. You remember that we as human beings cannot be helpful to each other if we have not had a chance to meet God and also meet fellow community members who know that humanity deserves better than nothing else than be, uh, supporting each other. And that's why we are always grateful and hopeful that we will be able to continue and our folks will continue to support our work and uh, support the team here at the LB. Thank you so much. Thank you.